These are the classic reads that almost weren't. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 beloved books that almost didn't get published. I simply cannot eat the same food every day. Fish, liver, day after day. I've eaten a river of liver and an ocean of fish. For this list, we're looking at successful novels that face a series of rejections or obstacles before getting published, and placing special attention on those books that have stood the test of time. I'm gonna do it. But I need to make sure she understand this ain't no game we playing here. Number 10. Carrie, Stephen King This horror story about a bullied girl with telekinesis is one of King's best-known works, but it almost never hit the shelves. It was originally supposed to be a short story, but King threw the first three pages in the trash. His wife Tabitha convinced him to finish it as a novel, however. Oh, come on, hon. Don't be so grouchy. Her quick thinking proved to be the struggling author's big break. Despite reportedly receiving 30 rejections, the paperback went on to sell 1 million copies in its first year, later spawning four movies, a musical, and a play. There's a lot of interesting tricks in this show that you haven't seen before. We are up close and personal, like expect to be right there. King continues to write bestsellers, but never forgot Tabitha's support. To quote Carrie's dedication note, this is for Tabby, who got me into it, and then bailed me out of it. Number 9. Dune, Frank Herbert A beginning is a very delicate time. Know then that it is the year 10,191. This seminal science fiction novel set in a feudal universe has been named the best-selling novel of its genre, but it faced a rocky road to publication. Herbert was inspired to write Dune out of his concern for the environment, and first published it as two shorter stories in Analog Magazine in the early 60s. The novel version was rejected over 20 times, before Chilton Books, then mostly a publisher of auto manuals, finally gave it a chance. Dune won the Hugo Award in 1966, and inspired five sequels, a cult film, songs, and even names for features of Saturn's moon Titan. Dune is an influential work of science fiction, and remains a pop culture fixture five decades later. Don't try your powers on me. Try looking into that place where you dare not look. You'll find me there staring back at you. Number 8. A Wrinkle in Time, Madeline Lengel Now a beloved children's book, this science fantasy tale about a girl looking for her father was rejected dozens of times before getting published. According to Lengel, it was turned down for being too different. She also thought it was rejected for having a female protagonist, which was rare for the genre. But a tea party one Christmas changed everything. A guest referred her to John C. Farrar of Farrar, Strauss, and Giroux. FSG didn't publish children's book back then, but Farrar liked the story and had it published. The book has won many awards since, and a Disney adaptation is in the works as of 2016. More than half a century later, A Wrinkle in Time continues to inspire children everywhere. The idea of being in A Wrinkle in Time that is so legendarily beloved by so many people, and to get to play something that's fantastical that way, um, it's really going to be an interesting experience. Number 7. Chicken Soup for the Soul Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen Hey, sweetie. Hey! <laughs> Chicken Soup for the Soul? The first installment of the famous nonfiction series has inspired millions of readers around the world, and it has an inspiring backstory to match. The anthology was reportedly rejected almost 150 times for being too positive, and because there was no sex or violence. Everyone said, stupid title, uh, people don't read short stories, anthologies don't sell, which more yes. literary anthologies don't, Yes, but these were real stories. New York publishers wanted nothing to do with the book, but a Florida-based publisher of self-help books, HCI, finally gave it the green light. They called us and said, uh, we love it, we want to publish it. Now under its own publishing company, the Chicken Soup series has over 250 titles in 43 languages. It's also the world's best-selling nonfiction series, with over 500 million copies sold as of 2016. Whether it's the book or the actual food, Chicken Soup will warm your heart. And we said, how many copies do you think you'll sell? And they said, uh, 20,000. We said, that's not our vision. They said, what's your vision? We said, uh, 150,000 by Christmas, which came out in July, and a million and a half in a year and a half. And they laughed at us. I'm sure you've had people laugh at your dreams sometimes. Yes, that's exactly. And they la he laughed out loud, and now he doesn't laugh anymore. Number six, Animal Farm, George Orwell. 
This classic allegory of Stalinist Russia is Orwell's second best-selling book after 1984, and a high school staple. While Orwell was already known for being a writer and journalist, British publishers initially turned the book down. They weren't worried about Orwell himself, but more so about the complicated political climate. Stalin was a ruthless dictator, but the Soviet Union and the UK were wartime allies. As a result, many publishers shunned anti-communist works altogether. But by August 1945, the war in Europe was essentially over, and Animal Farm was finally published. It has led to dozens of adaptations and cultural references, and made the list of Time Magazine's 100 Best English Language Novels from 1923 to 2005. Now that's something to squeal about. <laughs> Number 5. A Confederacy of Dunces – John Kennedy Toole This southern gothic satire set in New Orleans is a cult favorite, but its author never got to see its success. Devastated by his book's constant rejection and suffering from paranoia and depression, 31-year-old Toole took his own life in 1969. Thanks to his mother Thelma, Dunces saw the light of day. She found a carbon copy of the manuscript in his old room and was determined to publish it. She eventually caught the attention of Louisiana author and professor Walker Percy. He loved Dunces and helped get it published in 1980, 11 years after Toole died. The book won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 1981 and was adapted into a play by Boston's Huntington Theatre Company in 2015. Toole didn't know it, but he created an American masterpiece. This masterpiece was a hysterical novel, a laugh-out-loud novel, and it is now a laugh-out-loud play. Number 4. To Kill a Mockingbird – Harper Lee this novel about racism in the 1930s Deep South is now considered among the best in American literature. And I swore never to read again after To Kill a Mockingbird gave me no useful advice on killing mockingbirds. It did teach me not to judge a man based on the color of his skin. Surprisingly, Lee almost destroyed it before it was even finished. In the late 50s, she was reworking her manuscript with editor Tay Hohoff, but was unhappy with her progress. Lee threw her pages in the snow, only to call Hohoff, who convinced her to take them back and complete the novel. The book was an instant bestseller and won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 1961. That's not to mention the Oscar-winning film starring Gregory Peck as heroic lawyer Atticus Finch. The defendant is not guilty, but somebody in this courtroom is. Whether you're reading the book or watching the movie, this timeless tale is poignant, uplifting, and incredibly important. We'll keep right on reading the same every night, just as we always have. Number 3. The Diary of a Young Girl, a.k.a. The Diary of Anne Frank. Anne Frank. If you should find this diary, will you please keep it safe for me? This Jewish teenager's diary exposed the world to the horrors of the Holocaust from the eyes of a young adult. If it weren't for Meep Geese, a Dutch woman who helped hide the Franks, it might have been lost forever. She found the manuscript after the family was arrested and gave it to Anne's father Otto after the war. After about reportedly 16 or so rejections, an auto-approved version was published in 1947. In the 90s, readers got the unabridged version, known as Anne Frank Diary of a Young Girl, which included parts where Anne explores her sexuality. The diary has been adapted for TV, film, and theater, and is available in over 60 languages as of 2015. Anne's diary not only bears witness to evil, it also introduces us to a brave, precocious mind cut tragically short. You can have roses and violets and tulips all blooming in the same season. Isn't that wonderful? Number 2. Gone with the Wind – Margaret Mitchell With such a lasting presence in pop culture, it's hard to believe that this Civil War romance novel was apparently turned down close to 40 times. Mitchell started writing the book in 1926, while recovering from an injured ankle. Nine years later, Macmillan agreed to publish it. After months of fact-checking and editing, it hit the shelves in June 1936. It sold almost one million copies in the first six months and won the 1937 Pulitzer Prize for fiction. Even more successful is the 1939 blockbuster, starring Clark Gable and Vivian Lee. I know you drink on the quiet and I know how much you drink. It won eight competitive Oscars and is the highest-grossing film of all time, adjusted for inflation. When it comes to this book, frankly, we do give a damn. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Before we get to our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Number 1. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, J.K. Rowling I checked this out weeks ago for a bit of light reading. 
this is light. This is the first installment of the best-selling book series of all time, and its backstory is a testament to perseverance. In the over five years that Rowling wrote the book, she lost her mother, became a single parent, battled depression, and lived on state benefits. We were as skint as you can be without being homeless. In other words, we were existing entirely on benefits. She felt like a failure, but despite the manuscript's many rejections, Bloomsbury accepted it in 1997. As of 2015, the Harry Potter books have sold over 450 million copies, and the movies make up the second highest grossing film series in history, not counting for inflation. You'll be okay, Harry. You're a great wizard. You really are. Not as good as you. <laughs> Me. Books and cleverness. In 2004, Forbes magazine also named Rowling the first billionaire author. Rowling is among the most esteemed writers and philanthropists of our time, and it all began with The Boy Who Lived. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite book that just barely hit the shelves? For more inspirational top tens published daily, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. So I just thought, well, I want to write. So I write the book. And what, what, what is the worst that can happen? It gets turned down by every publisher in Britain, big deal.